All right, welcome everybody. Thank you very much for coming. This is it's a bit of an experiment. I've not run a webinar for Ghost Fishing UK before. Um, quite a lot of people already, nearly 50 people in the room. So thanks very much for, for taking the time out this evening for coming. I'm gonna try and talk for about half an hour this evening and give a real kind of bird's eye view of what Ghost Fishing UK is all about. But there's a few kind of house rules if you like. What I'd like to do is, basically I'm, I'm more than happy to take questions, but what I'd like you to do is to put them into the chat window. Okay, and what we'll do then is we'll deal with the questions at the end of the presentation. So if you can't see the chat window, um, can, you, can you unmute yourself and let me know? You should be able to see it at the bottom of your screen. Okay, I'm getting no negatives. All right, excellent. All right, so questions in the chat, in the chat window. Keep yourselves muted, please, otherwise it will just get super noisy. And I shall try and begin. I'm juggling all kinds of screens and presentations and things. So it's a bit of an experiment. Bear with me. Let's see if I can make this work. So I'm gonna share my screen with you and take you through our presentation. And there we go. Go. All right. So thanks for thank thank you very much for coming this evening, everybody. I hope you're all coping with the lockdown as best as you can. It's kind of frustrating because it's some of the best weather we've ever had. The, the visibility around the coast looks amazing, and it just looks like spectacular diving weather. But unfortunately, here at Ghost Fishing UK, we're we're not out diving, obviously for for obvious reasons. So we're stuck doing webinars instead. So what I'm gonna try and tell you guys tonight is a little bit about the, the overall, the big problem of ghost fishing and trying to turn it into some kind of context for you. I wanna show you what is present around the coast of the UK and what kind of ghost fishing problem happens here in the UK. And then expand a bit more into the kind of what we do here in the UK. Now, 15% of our protein intake as humans comes from seafood. And, you know, all around the world, there are big ships, small ships, medium sized ships, and they go out and they catch fish. Now, it's a natural part of the fishing process that gear gets lost. It can get snagged on reefs, it can simply get caught and lost in storms. You know, the, the ocean is a very, very harsh environment and it she doesn't forgive very well. So fishing gear gets lost. It's, an, it's a normal part of, of the fishing kind of process, really. And what our friends at the Olive Ridley Project have done for us is to produce this graphic that shows really well, I think, the, the idea behind this ghost fishing cycle. So you can see, I don't know if you can see my pointer there. If a fishing net gets lost, basically it continues to be a fishing net. It catches animals. And when those an animals get tangled in that fishing net, they ultimately die. But then they become bait for other animals as well, which means more animals go into that fishing net and they get tangled up and then they die and the process continues. Now, fishing nets these days are made of plastics and very, very hardy materials. So these things can get these things can exist for, it's estimated, up to 400 years in the ocean. And you know who knows how much fish and animal and wildlife can get caught in these things um, before they ultimately degrade into microplastics or something like that. The United Nations estimate that something like 640,000 tons of fishing gear get lost in the sea every single year. Now that's incredibly difficult to, to kind of put into context. It, you know, what, what does that even look like? 640,000 tons of fishing gear. So what I've tried to do is to, is to try and make that a bit more real for you. So what I've done is I've produced a, I've got a picture here of some typical kind of one meter cube like builder's bags. Now from what the work we've done around the UK, we reckon that one of these bags holds about a hundred kilos of fishing gear. 
So how many bags does 640,000 tons of fishing gear correspond to? It's quite a lot. It is 6.4 million of those bags of fishing gear that gets lost in the sea every single year. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm none the wiser. I don't know what 6.4 million bags of fishing gear looks like. There was about 20 in the last image, but 6.4 million of them, I don't really get it. So what I've done is I've tried to make it a bit more real for you by picking some, some uh, buildings that we could fill with bags of fishing gear to show you how much fishing gear would, would take to fill it. So there we have the, the Elizabeth Tower, Big Ben, as it's sometimes known. And if we filled the Elizabeth Tower with bags of fishing gear, we'd managed to put in 4,650 bags. Okay, that's, we're not even close. So filling up Big Ben with fishing gear, we don't even touch that 6.4 million bags of fishing gear. So we need another building. We're need, gonna need a bigger building. Now let's try the Empire State Building. Much, much bigger building. Now here we can get a million bags into the Empire State Building. Now again, we're getting close, but we've got to fill up 6.4 million bags. So six Empire State Buildings we're gonna need. So it's not quite there where I wanna be. Now, I kind of started to run out of buildings at this point. And it, it's, because when you see really huge buildings that would be the right size, I thought there's, there aren't really that many. So what I decided to do is to see how many times I could fill up the London Underground with, with bags of fishing gear. Now, 50% of the London Underground network is actually underground, and that amounts to about 200 kilometers of tunnel. And if you filled up the tunnels with these bags of fishing net, you could get 2 million bags of fishing net into the London Underground tunnels. We could fill up the entire London Underground network three times every single year with the amount of fishing gear that's getting lost which is, to me, I can kind of understand that. I know how long it takes to travel around on the tube. I know how big the tunnels are. It's just, it's staggering, the amount of fishing gear that's getting lost. Remember, this is every year, not just kind of that exists at the moment. So what does this mean for us here in the UK? This is a worldwide figure. So how does that relate to us here in the UK? Now, I've been a, a diver in the UK for more years than I care to remember, probably nearly 30 years now. And people often ask me, why do you go diving around the UK? What is it that you see? So I'm gonna basically take you through a very quick tour of some of the things that you can find beneath our seas. If you're not divers, this hopefully will kind of show you what is beneath our seas, in and around our seas. And if you are a diver, then you'll see some old friends coming up. So a very common animal here, it's just a starfish, okay? There's loads of them, they live on the bottoms, or they live on the reefs, they live on and around shipwrecks. Here's a lovely one. Um, this, is a, this is a scallop. So it's a target of the fishing industry. So dredges and, and nets will try and catch these animals. I think they're, they're really cool little animals, these. I think they always look a little bit like birthday cakes with these little candles on them and almost decorated if you look inside them. And they swim incredibly well as well. They're seriously funny when they start swimming. So these are all over kind of 20 meter seabed depth in sand and muck. You will also see lots and lots of fish swimming around as well. For those that are interested, this is a female cuckoo wrasse or Labrus mixtus. And anybody who knows me will know how hard it was for me to come to that statement. So what else lives in our seas? Well, crabs, crustaceans are very common. This is a velvet swimming crab. Um, you'll see these very, very often. They, they're kind of funny little creatures. They stand up and they wave their claws at you. Really cute little animals. Everybody likes this one. That's a lobster there. Again, they're, they're less common, but they're big, heavy animals. They, they kind of love to come out. They're quite aggressive. They wave those claws at, at you. But they are, again, a big target of the fishing industry because they taste so good. So what else do we have around the coast of the, of the UK? You'll see gray seals. This one, we came across this one up in the Farne Islands off the northeast coast of England. Uh, they're really friendly animals. They're very inquisitive, very playful. 
But what that means is they quite often get tangled up in fishing gear. Uh, they're great fun to play with, obviously highly intelligent animals, and they go and try and catch fish from fishing gear. And if they then get tangled in that fishing gear, obviously they don't do so well, they don't fare so well, but it's great to see them underwater. You may be surprised to see that picture taken in the UK. It's a beautiful reef, sponges, sea urchins, kelp forests, lovely clear blue-green water, which is typical of, of diving in the UK. So these are all things that we can see of the natural world underwater around the UK. But we also have a distant, different aspect of diving around the UK, and that's to dive on shipwrecks. We have a, a very rich maritime history here in the UK. And what that means is we have thousands of shipwrecks all around the coast, relatively accessible to us as divers. And these things become habitats and homes for sea life as well. They also basically tangle up in fishing gear as well. So for all kinds of reasons, these things are, are interesting to us. And there you can see a shipwreck and as pieces of that steel have become colonized by anemones, by crabs there, there's sea squirts and brittle stars and the, and the common spotted scuba diver as well, you'll see there on the right hand side of the picture. So shipwrecks are again a fantastic place to go and see, see sea life, but also you'll see, um, you'll see incredible sea life, but you'll also start to come across fishing gear as well. You'll see shoals of fish schooling around, uh, around shipwrecks. This one's up in the Orkney Islands in Scotland. Again, sea urchins, sea anemones, starfish everywhere. So very, very common for us to dive on, on shipwrecks. But also, because of the nature of these shipwrecks, they tend to snag fishing gear. Either trawlers will go too close to the, to the wreck and snag their wrecks, all these, all these nets will just drift in on the tide and get tangled up. So for us, they're great sites to visit because that's what we enjoy doing, but also we find that they tend to snag fishing there. And as a diver, you know, every wreck dive I've done around the UK, I've encountered fishing gear. It's just a normal part of diving. And that's kind of why we set up Ghost Fishing UK is because, you know, we need to, we're the only ones that know about it effectively. So we need, we have to be the ones that kind of advocate for that environment. Now fishing a, is a common industry in the UK. It's a, it's a tough industry, I make no doubt about it. Uh, but these kind of fishing boats are in every small port up and down the country. Um, they're out fishing in just about all kinds of weather and typically you know, they use fishing nets, pots, creels, all kinds of things to, to catch the fish. Trawl nets, monofilament net like this. They're all very common things. And this fishing gear gets lost, as I said earlier. Now, I wanna be really clear about this. This is not a deliberate act on behalf of the fishing community. They're not throwing nets away. Then they're, they're not maliciously discarding nets into the sea. I wanna make that very clear, we're not, trying to point fingers at the fishing industry here at all. But we wanna help, we wanna help take this fishing gear out of the sea. So what is it that Ghost Fishing UK do? Who are we? So we are scuba divers, that's what we do for fun, okay? We're volunteers, we don't get paid to do this. This, this is kind of part of the passion, this is why we dive. So yeah, we love to go and see beautiful shipwrecks, we love to go and look at wildlife underwater, but we like to clean it up as well. So we built Ghost Fishing UK to be a, basically an organization for divers to join in and help clean up the sea. We also have non-divers in our midst as well. And these people are amazing volunteers that come on the boats with us. They, they help us pull stinking fishing nets around. Just amazing people. And for the last couple of years, we've been a UK registered charity. We go out and we find fishing nets. We use reports from our own divers, from divers in the diving community. And we go out, we find it, and we lift it back to the surface again. And if we can, we'll return it to the fishing industry. The picture you see there, that net is pretty much toast, so that's of no use to anybody. But if we find lobster pots or nets that are in any kind of usable state, then we will return it to the fishing industry. If it can't be returned and retasked re as fishing gear, we will recycle it. So it can be turned into all kinds of, of new material, which I'll talk about shortly. Now, we are in such a unique position as divers because 
we go underwater. There's very, by definition, we go underwater. We go where people, other people don't go. So we're the eyes of that environment, really. We know what lurks beneath the surface of the sea, which is so difficult to see. So because we have that information, it kind of comes to us. We, we are the custodians, if you like, of, the, of that environment. So this is why, really why we do this work. We're divers and we want to clean up the areas that we play in, basically. Now, to become a ghost fishing diver, it's not just a case of going down there and starting pulling up pieces of net. If you see the picture of the diver, he's fairly heavily equipped. Okay, he's got extra cylinders. He's got more equipment than you would normally have on a regular recreational dive. And what we do as Ghost Fishing UK is that we train these divers into using that specialized equipment. We train them to use lifting bags, uh, big sharp knives. We get them to operate as teams to lift this equipment, this lost fishing gear back to the surface. It's dirty work. It's physically hard work. It's, it requires an incredibly high degree of teamwork. So we spend a lot of time investing in our volunteer divers to, to basically make sure they're safe underwater. Uh, this is a particularly unsafe activity if you do it wrong. Remember what these nets are designed to do. They're designed to catch animals and the human is as much an animal as anything else. So training plays a huge part in, in what we do at Ghost Fishing UK to make sure that our teams remain safe when they do this work. Now, typically on a, over a normal kind of diving season, we are normally out about one, I'm gonna say weekend, but it's a two day project. So one two day project a month on average, if we get really good weather and we get a lot of reports and we have a lot of availability with our volunteer, volunteers, then we'll go more often. Uh, and we also do one kind of week long project every year. And what we do in the week long project is that we, last year we went down to Cornwall and we, we camped out down in Cornwall and we did ghost fishing recoveries on some of the wrecks, but we did beach cleans, we did outreach work. We worked down at the, the Cornish Seal Sanctuary down at Gweek which is a fantastic place. And they're, they're really cool because they, they, they basically help and rehabilitate seals that have quite frequently been caught in, in ghost gear. So this kind of week, this one week every year of, of big outreach kind of high visibility project is something we do a lot as well. Now what happens to this gear when it gets back to the surface? Well, if we can, we get it back to the fishing industry. That's what we really want to do. Now, this, was a, this photo was taken in, in the Orkneys in Scapa Flow. And this was a one week project that we did several years back now. And in one week, we managed to recover something like 60 uh, crab pots. So these are shellfish traps that would catch crabs normally. And a good proportion of those were in good enough condition that they could be returned to the fishing industry, which is, is a fantastic result, I think. Now, on the right hand side of that image, you can see some green netting. Now that netting can be recycled. It can be turned back into a yarn called Econil. And that can then go, be a, that can go on to make um, swimwear, socks, all kinds of fabric carpets, all kinds of stuff gets made with this Econil, but it starts out as fishing net. On the left hand and bottom side of the image, you see loads and loads of old ropes. And up in Orkney, we're, we're very good friends with a chap called Mark Cook, who runs a company called afraid not and what mark does is he takes old ropes and he washes them and cleans them and he turns them into beautiful doormats and doorstops just really ornate uh, knotting work and it's all made from recovered recycled rope so again that's a really good kind of retasking of, of old kind of trawl ropes and things like that now as i said all of our divers are volunteers they pay for this out their own money nobody gets paid to go and fish this gear out a charter boat, a diving boat to go out, costs about 600 pounds per day. To be properly equipped to do this work, each diver, I did a very quick calculation on this, but each diver's equipment costs at least 5,000 pounds. Every lift bag that we use costs 100 pounds in that region. And yes, you can use them more than once, but they live a hard life and we do occasionally lose them as well. We have transport to and from the dive sites. We have accommodation. We have to, 
to pay for the gas that we breathe. We then have to pay to get nets moved up and down the country to our storage facilities. So none of this is without cost. And it's, it's no small cost either. So basically, I guess you're asking now, who's paying for all this? Now, we have some very generous sponsors who I'm gonna mention just next. Um, and without them, a lot of the work, we, we would have to pay for it out of our own pocket. The general public have been incredibly generous. We get donations through our website, which I'm gonna show you shortly as well. And we get donations and support from other charities and nonprofit organizations as well. So quite a large proportion of our work does get funded by external sources, but quite a significant amount as well is paid for out of our own divers volunteer pockets. So it's more than volunteering actually, you're, more, you're volunteering and paying for to go and recover this gear as well. So some of the, the sponsors, some of the, the projects that we work alongside and have supported us in the past and continue to do so. First one you see on there is Healthy Seas. Now, Healthy Seas are an organization that work basically to try and link up all the different sections of this pathway. And their, their strap line is from a journey from waste to wear, which I think is a, a good description of what they do. So they capture fishing net either from the fishing industry, the end of life nets, or they pick up nets that us divers that collect, and they then make sure it gets to a recycling facility where it can be turned into the eco nil yarn. And Healthy Seas were kind enough to sponsor us last year and supported uh, 10 kind of two day projects that we did last year. So we're very grateful for Healthy Seas for that support. House and Dive Systems are a company that make the lift bags that you saw, the big orange kind of balls that pull equipment back to the surface again. And Halcyon Dive Systems, I've had a long kind of relationship with this company, very good friends with the, with the owners. And every time I call them up and say, you know, we need some more lifting bags, they're very, very helpful. And they just send us, you know, another 10 lifting bags. So really great support. And as we expand with more teams around the country, they continually kind of support our efforts. So we're very grateful to Halcyon Dive Systems as well. Now, the final, the final team I want to thank really for the support that we've got comes from the Sea Life Trust. Now, you may know the Sea Life Trust. They organize or they manage the, manage, they, they are part of the organization that runs the, the Sea Life Centers, the, the aquariums up and down the country. They also run the Cornish Sea Life Center in Guic as one of their kind of flagship projects. And last year, they were very kind to come on board with this. I gave a talk at the aquarium in London and we got talking and they were very kind to sponsor our week long trip down to Cornwall. And basically we are gonna be working closer and closer with the Sea Life Trust as, the, as this year kind of pans out, but how it pans out, nobody really knows at the moment. So hopefully it will all go well with the Sea Life Trust. We're very grateful for their support though. So the next thing that quite people often ask is how on earth can we get involved? Now, if you're a diver, it's fairly obvious, but let me, let me start right back at the start. If you're not a diver, or you just wanna, if you are a diver and you wanna come and see how we work, you're more than welcome to come and help us on the boat. We we'll always need people to, it does it not glamorous work, I will warn you, to come out, get on the boat, and when that net gets back to the surface, you can help us haul it in, you can free any animals that are still trapped in it, document what we've got, help drag it back onto shore, package it up and get it bundled off to our storage, okay? So we're always looking for non-diving support. And if you are a diver and you wanna know if it's a good project for you to get, in, get involved with, then this is a great way to get to know, to, get to know us. If you're a diver, you can register an interest with us. Um, basically, we'll ask you a few questions about your diving experience. And what we'll do then is we'll put you on a list of people that we will contact when we're recruiting divers. And we do that sporadically through the year. Again, as I said, we're all volunteers. So what we want to do is try and train divers, but we have to fit that around lives, jobs, families, and the actual ghost fishing effort as well. So don't be offended if you don't get email, email back immediately. We don't operate like a, a commercial diver training organization. We kind of, we work out that we've got time to deliver a course and then we go through the list and we do it that way. So if you are a diver and you're out diving and you see fishing net, report it, okay? Please, please report it. 
I don't care if every single person on your boat sees the same piece of net and you all put a report in, that's great because we can kind of, we can filter that out. But we have a, a place on the website that you can go and report what you see. Give us money, donations are always welcome. I know things are very tight for everybody at the minute, so this is not really what this is all about. But you saw the kind of amount of money we have to spend to go out and do a recovery, 600 pounds a day for a boat. Um, a gas fill will cost 15 pounds to fill a, a twin set with, with a breathing gas that we can use. So small amounts, big amounts, if you can donate, we'll be very, very grateful. But right now in this climate, this is not kind of why I'm here. Join up with the newsletter. I'll show you how to do that in a second. And follow our media. We have a presence on Facebook. We have a big presence on Instagram and Twitter as well. This is all mystery to me. I don't understand how most of it works. But follow our media. Apparently, that's a good thing. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. It's all there. So what I want to do now is pause this momentarily. And I'm going to jump out to just show you around our website. And just for your own kind of notes really, www.ghostfishing.co.uk. Okay, we used to be .org, but we are now .co.uk, because we are a specific, a specific um, .co.uk domain now. So put that in your bookmarks. Okay, I'm gonna show you our website now, if I can work out how to switch my sharing screen. Okay, so here is our website, www.ghostfishing.co.uk. And basically, I'm gonna just talk you very quickly through here. There's all kinds of things, basically lists of projects that we've done. You can go and read those in your, in your kind of free time. Basically documented everything that we've done over the last couple of years. Okay, that's a real nice kind of sit down and read, and particularly in these times if you're looking for something to do. We have, if you're interested in getting involved or learning more about ghost fishing, please go to the frequently asked questions. Okay, and there, is a, there are common questions that keep coming up. And there's a whole world of information that you can kind of learn about us here. And it will help you kind of get an idea of what it is that we do here. So take a look at that as well. We have a blog as well, which is kind of more fresher kind of summaries and kind of more timely stuff that we do. If they were running any events like a training course or the winter warmer, which we do every year to try to introduce people practically to what we do, that'll be posted on the events page. If you're looking for kind of a real visual treat of the kind of things that we do, you can go to our photos page. And there we have some amazing photographers in Ghost Fishing UK. So not only do we, we go underwater and collect fishing gear, but we take pictures of it and we document it as well. And there's a whole bunch of seriously fantastic images there by, by our underwater and surface photographers as well. We have a shop where you can buy all kinds of goodies. Now I wanted to highlight one thing here while I'm in this area. You may have seen the ghost fishing hoodies. Okay, these are really high quality hoodies. I've got two of them and I live in them when the weather's a bit chilly. Okay, particularly out on dive boats or out and about. The ghost fishing hoodie has a, got a really cool design by a guy called Steve Jakeway. He does a lot of work for us, just kind of making images and, and logos and stuff for us. Okay, it's a really cool little image. Okay, we have come to the end of this production run now. We've got a handful left. So against, against every bone in my body, we're discounting this down to 34 quid, down from 40 quid. So if you wanna get the, one of the last ones of this particular version of the, of the hoodie, then get them while they're hot, guys, because won't, we won't be doing this design again. Let's see if I can get me back to the website. Now, over here, we've got the Contact Us page. Now, there's a couple of things on here that are interested to you, okay? Now, the donate page, I said I'm not gonna make a big deal about it, but there is a mechanism that you can donate your hard-earned money to us, and basically that's it there on the donate page. I'm not gonna dwell on that so much. Let's go into the newsletter. Basically, all we do is you fill in your email address, your name, okay, and give us a quick idea of, of where you live and, if, and where you dive. If you don't dive, it doesn't matter, 
okay you just say you're not a diver and what we do is we'll send you updates for what we do now we don't we're not going to spam your inboxes we're not going to give you hundreds and hundreds of emails we're not trying to sell you anything really um, this is just information for you to, to keep you updated on the activities of, of what we're doing if you are a diver and you come across a ghost net okay you can report here my internet is slow and this is a real easy form and it doesn't want to load today come on form load it's not loading right there it is uh, basically pop your email in pop your name in okay and you'll be asked a few kind of key questions about what kind of dive what kind of ghost gear that you saw so please do that if you're a diver it's is hugely valuable to us we've got approaching a hundred different reports most of these we get to go and look at and a lot of them have been cleared out now so we do act on this information if you want to volunteer for uh, for us to just come and work on the surface with us come out on the boat um, my internet is uh, slowing down drastically okay there's a contact form here basically pop your details in here and next time a boat goes out we'll certainly contact you to see if you're available okay please be over 18 okay it's <laughs> we just can't take younger people than that i'm sure you understand if you're a diver that's your that's your link there okay and we need divers okay we need people that are committed to this kind of to this kind of conservation work and if you pop your details in here and it will go i ask you a few questions about your diving experience we'll put you into the list of people that are interested in diving with us and when training places come up on our courses we will let you know like i say please don't try and treat it as like a commercial course where you you wander into the shop give them your money and you're on a course the next morning it doesn't work like that it has to fit in around quite a quite a lot of very busy schedules so I apologize that we don't work like that but we we simply can't work like that so there we go that is a quick overview of our website I hope you enjoyed that let me come back to my slides and I'm almost done here guys so I have an announcement to make now okay which i've been very excited about the team is really excited about this announcement let me see if i can show you it because it's a very visual thing okay we have a brand new logo and you can see it there now we've been working on this for the last couple of weeks or months and we are super pleased with this one it's a, to me this sums up exactly what we do at ghost fishing we rescue or we recover nets that would otherwise trap wildlife in them okay it's a beautiful logo we're really pleased with it but you're probably asking you had a good logo why well ghost fishing uk used to be part of a global organization the ghost fishing organization but the ghost fishing organization decided to rebrand to be ghost divers and we decided because we have so many contacts at every level within Kind of british diving even at governmental level we work closely with the marine management organization when we when we apply for licenses to do this work we are becoming a recognized name as ghost fishing uk so we considered that it was in our best interest to retain our name now we wish ghost diving and healthy sea very very well with their future with their future endeavors and i'm sure they'll be very very successful but we preferred in this particular instance to remain completely independent and for that we needed a new logo and Steve Jakeway really kind of did the business here and he's, he's made a beautiful logo for us and you're going to start to see that kind of heading out through our social media now I think much of it is being uploaded as we speak so I'm going to finish up there I've gone a little bit over the time I wanted so basically if you want to help us out we are looking for non-divers particularly okay go to the website sign up your name for interest and as soon as we're back diving again we'll be having non-divers on the boat one or two per trip showing you how it all works and basically helping us out if you do have any spare money and i do get that you probably don't please consider a small donation okay and don't forget there's an offer on the hoodies so i'm going to finish this presentation now because i suspect there is a whole bunch of of questions in that text